You're listening to The Lyndia Grant Show. Think on these things with Lyndia Grant. Well, good evening, Radio 1 listeners. Thank you for tuning in to the Lydia Grant Show. We've been here for 12 years, and we try to bring you good programming every week. And today is no different. Uh, We're here on Spirit 1340 WYCB Radio 1 station, the oldest gospel station in America, founded more than 40 years ago. Today is July 1st, 2022. And I want to introduce you to my guest today. We are going to have our own Dr. Julianne Malvo, who's going to talk about politics. But I want to first uh, introduce my guest that's going to be on after our commercial break. She is Baltimore Chief Judge, Honorable Judge Wanda Keys Heard. She's retired. And she'll be talking about Roe versus Wade and what the ruling will is saying. And I wanted to ask her to be on because everybody's been talking about it and I've been hearing a lot of interpretations, but she was a chief judge and I know she know how to read the bill. So welcome to the show today, Judge Heard. Hi, Lindia. Thank you so much for having me once again on your show. And again, congratulations on 12 years. We we just keep getting better. All right. Well, thank you, Judge Hurd. Just hang out a minute while we talk to Dr. Julianne Malvo. Dr. Julianne Malvo, for those of you who may not know, uh, President Emeritus of Bennett College in my home state of North Carolina. She has her Ph.D. in economics, and she is the president of the Rainbow Push Excel. Hello to you, Dr. Julia. She's a speaker extraordinary and speaks around the world. And she's getting back out there again uh, now that COVID is easing up some. How are you today, Dr. Julia? I am great. Uh, blessed and highly favored. Just happy to be here in Los Angeles where it's sunny but not hot. And we've got a little wind going on. So Good. this will be with a greeting to Judge Hurd. I am so happy that she's going to talk about Roe. Tomorrow, I'll be joining Congresswoman Maxine Waters, who is having a pro-choice rally at Southwestern College, and I will be on the lineup with the other speakers to talk about this, what this court has done. So let me start on a high note. You put it on your Facebook page. Katanji Brown Jackson is now an associate justice of the Supreme Court. So can we all sing, oh, happy day at one time? We got a black woman on the court. Oh, now we have to wait. I, 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 have, I have almost a thousand comments. This is so good. I didn't realize so many people would, would hit what I said, but it's good. No, I, I I just gave you a heart. I couldn't. I didn't have time to give you a comment. I just gave That's you a all heart. Right. We're all happy. Oh, happy day. 233 years and finally a sister on the Supreme Court. However, the moment, while a celebratory moment, is also somewhat bittersweet, if we think about it. This court is the most chaotic court. I'm sure Sister Juris will agree with me. These people are crazy. Um, they are cutting back. Right? <laughs> cutting back they're, now they're curtailing the EPA. Um, they're, they are just really cutting back on our rights. But I have to say something, Lindia. What did we expect? You know, when the orange orangutan... Uh, ran for office. He said, first of all, he said he would grab us by our you-know-what. And then mm-hmm. he said, anti-abortion, I don't know how many he's paid for. Um, <clears throat> that's me, not Lydia, so anybody wants to sue, sue me. Um, but in any <laughs> case, we don't know the abortions he's paid for, but we know that he was extremely active, and all of a sudden he's Mr. Conservative. No, he's trying to protect his base. But what we see court by court all over the country is in some cases, courts are going crazy saying, Life begins at conception, and in other cases, we see some courts standing up or some judges standing up and saying, oh, no, we're not going there. And standing up at least the women who need uh, abortions, who want bodily autonomy. So it's, it's, it's just a very challenging time, but I know that Justice uh, Katanji will be time enough for them. And I hope she can um, do something about uh, Uncle, Uncle Clarence. 
and she may be able to because if he looks at the face of a sister, uh, I have some stuff he's not going to be able to say. But in any case, we, there we have it in terms of the court. All kind of other explosive things going on. On Monday, we were told that there would be a, a, another January 6th hearing. And Casey Hutchinson, 25-year-old woman, assistant to Mark Meadows, came forward and talked about Trump's erratic behavior, throwing plates, trying to go up to the Capitol. Even though Secret Service told him, no, he couldn't go. He was going to go anyway because he bad and he's all that. And he was going to go anyway. And that did not happen. According to her, he grabbed the steering wheel grab somebody by their clavicle, which is your neck, um, in case anybody wasn't following that. So her, now, of course, you know, the predictable happens. 45, the orangutan, comes back and says, oh, she's just angry because I wouldn't hire her. Um, And others have tried to disparage her. But we have to give that young lady kudos, along with Liz Cheney and Biddy Thompson, for that. Uh, it's, It's explosive news. Now, meanwhile, the economy. Inflation may be slowing. At least gas prices have gone down this last week by 14 cents. The average price left $5 a gallon. Now it's $4.84 a gallon. That's good news. That's average nationwide. I would tell you, you cannot find $4 gas in California. You can't find $5 gas in California. You know, just, but in any case, we see some signs of good economic news, but they're just signs they're not the real thing. At the same time, inflation is alive and well. People are talking about how much more expensive the 4th of July America holiday is going to cost you. I don't celebrate the 4th of July. I call it July about freedom and justice. I don't celebrate it. I read the 4th of July. Frederick does this. I read it to everybody who calls me on the 4th of July at America. But one of the things that's cracking me is the price of fireworks is going up. Yay, because y'all don't need a firework anyway. We'll get fireworks when we get freedom. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, y'all white folks, just, just pay more for your fireworks. Uh, but it is interesting when we see what's going up and what isn't. Uh, they say that the price of having a barbecue for 10 people has gone up by 10%. Whatever. Um, but just, just sharing that economic news. Now, in, on to international news. Here's what we know, and it's exciting to know. Uh, NATO is broadening its reach, so Finland and Sweden will be joining. Uh, President Biden has set aside $800 billion more for Ukraine. Uh, Putin is pouting, but we knew that. But the, the bottom line here, Lindia, we can talk about all this, but, you know, we have the political will to support Ukraine. We don't have the political will to support, support children here, to support voting rights, to support any of the things that we need. I'm not hating on Ukraine. I think that allowing Putin to take over that country gives him the green light to take over any other country he wants to. But I'm just saying people exhibit political will when they want to. So why can't we get political will for voting rights? Why can't we get political will for a living wage? I'm not, like I said, I'm not hating pain. I'm just saying it. And that's all I'm doing is saying. Um, finally, you know, it's really interesting when I talk about curtail freedoms, the GBLTQIA community should be worried. Uh, Uncle Thomas, or uh, Uncle Clarence, or whatever he is, um, he's, he is basically saying you could take away the right to conception, not to, to contraceptive. I hope Sister Judge expounds on that. How could they do that? The right to same-sex marriage. Uh, the right to um, have same-sex sexual relationships. In Texas, they say they're going to look at the sodomy laws. So why can't we also take away the right to interracial marriage and let uh, Clarence cut Jenny loose? I think I'll stop on that note. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Julian. I appreciate you so much. I'm glad you're available today. You've been traveling to Texas and New York and D.C. and you're all over the place. So I hope you're enjoying yourself. I am living my life like it's golden. All right. All right. Okay. You listen. Thank you. Have a good holiday. Uh, Thank you. I, you I know you just even if it's just being off, that's good enough. That's good. Just to be off. No fourth of you lied. I'll sit in my house and harass people. Calling them and beating fresh stuff. <laughs> All right. You're listening to the Lydia Grant Show. We're going to come back after our commercial break, and we're going to talk to the Honorable Judge Wanda Keys Heard, retired Baltimore Circuit Court Judge for the city of Baltimore. And we're going to be talking about, in a very intelligent manner, someone who knows what is written in Roe versus Wade. So we can know what's going on 
and what's going to happen. Back in a moment. If it wasn't for my care coach at Mary Health, I probably wouldn't be so healthy right now. As a man, you know we don't get checkups or see a doctor regularly anyways. It's probably just a man thing because none of my partners go either. We know we should, but we just don't and hope it works out. So what changed for you? A Mary Health assigned me a care coach, somebody that gives one-on-one help, answer questions, explain things, and help set my appointments. She also helped me understand what having high blood pressure really means and ways to manage it so it doesn't kill me. It ain't nothing to play with. If you're a member of AmeriHealth, ask for a care coach. I'm glad I got mine. At AmeriHealth, if you need a care coach, you can have one. Just call us at 1-877-759-6224 to get connected. 1-877-759-6224. This program is funded in part by the government of the District of Columbia Department of Healthcare Finance. Mayor Muriel Bowser. Washington and former religion columnist Lindia Grant. Ida B. Wells, born into enslavement, was a journalist and activist. An avid reader, she read through the entire Bible many times. Wells was once asked to leave the ladies' car and sit in the color train. She refused and train officials pushed her. Ida B. Wells retaliated but was pushed off the train at the next stop. A crowd of whites applauded. She vowed to get even. Three of her close friends were lynched for opening businesses that cut into profits of whites. Everything changed for Wells. She spoke out internationally against lynching of blacks for the rest of her life. Through her efforts, lynching in America nearly disappeared by the time of her death. And NAACP founder, we salute Ida B. Wells for Women's History Month. Read more in the religion column of the Washington Informer, an award-winning African-American newspaper. We don't report crime or gossip, just positive news. Pick up the Washington Informer or visit us online at WashingtonInformer.com. Call 202-561-4100 for more information. This is Frank Smith with the African-American Civil War Museum in Washington, D.C., located at 1925 Vermont Avenue Northwest on the Green Line. Did you know that a recent study found that children who visit museums do better in school and in life than children who do not? So parents, teachers, and preachers, let's get moving. I promise you if you bring your children to the African American Civil War Museum, they will be inspired by the images that they see. They will be impressed by our living history reenactors who are always available. And they will be involved in our scavenger hunt that takes them throughout our exhibit. That's the African American Civil War Museum, 1925 Vermont Avenue. Our hours are 10 to 6.30 on weekdays, 12 to 4 on Saturdays and Sundays. See it. Be inspired. All right, and we're back. You're listening to the Lindia Grant Show here on Radio 1 Spirit 1340, WYCB in the Washington, D.C. area. Now on to my second guest, the Honorable Judge Wanda Hurd. She served as citizen of Baltimore City as a judge from 1999 until 2021, when she retired as the first female chief judge in the history of of the 8th Judicial Circuit. She graduated from the University of Maryland School of Law in 1982 and obtained her undergraduate degree in political science from the University of Maryland, Baltimore County in 1979. During her 40-year legal career, she served as the Division Chief of the Special Victims Unit in the Baltimore City State's Attorney's Office. She was a federal public defender and assistant attorney general for for Maryland, for the state. And the bulk of her career before becoming a judge, as she was a federal prosecutor and criminal chief in the United States Attorney's Office. She's retired from the bench after 21 years as a judge and currently resides in Baltimore City. Welcome to the show again today, Judge Heard. You've been on several times with me, and I thank you for coming back. And welcome to the show again. Thank you so much for the invitation, Lindia. I always appreciate coming on and also listening to the music before the show starts. I love it. So thank you Good. again. Thank you. All right, well, first, before we even talk about Roe v. Wade, because you're an African-American woman who made history, as, as yourself in the state of Maryland and the city of Baltimore, I wanted to find out what you want to say about 
this history of Honorable Justice Kentanji Brown Jackson taking her oath yesterday. That was just awesome. I was so excited about that. Um, having watched her confirmation hearings, when she handled herself with, with such grace under fire and with such dignity. But more importantly, you know, her qualifications are just off the chart. She graduated from Harvard Law. She was also a federal public defender like myself, a trial judge, a, a, an appellate judge, and having spent time on the Sentencing Commission. Uh, it was just thoroughly enjoyable to know that she now um, joins the other justices. And finally, we have a woman, um, an African-American woman, sitting on that bench. So I was just tickled, if that's a good place. To describe it, I, I am too. Thank you, thank you so much. I just had to have you say something about it. Now let's talk about Roe versus Wade. That you've been getting ready for this, so go right into it. Help us to know what has happened and what's going to happen. So first of all, let me just let your listeners know there are two cases: Roe versus Wade actually uh, forbid states from banning abortion before um, an unboard was uh, uh, viable. So it, it, it said, you know, if states wanted to restrict uh, abortions, they were forbidden. And that was Roe versus Wade. And basically they grounded that opinion in the right to privacy, those private decisions that are made, um, the right of liberty for women to decide what rights uh, what protections that they should have for their own bodies. And they interpreted the Constitution in applying it in common uh, day, saying that these are rights that we believe can be inferred from the constitutional right to privacy, the First Amendment, the Fourth Amendment, and more importantly, the Fourteenth Amendment. Liberty, privacy, happiness, those rights and the Supreme Court had that law in place for 50 years. Along comes this court, and what they have done in the case Dobbs versus Jackson, because that's the name of the case. You know, Roe versus Wade is overturned and it's gone. The new case is Dobbs versus Jackson, and the Supreme Court has ruled that there is no constitutional right to abortion, that you cannot infer in the meaning of the 14th Amendment, the right of liberty, the right of uh, privacy, that that does not mean you have a right to abortion. So you're saying, well, wait a minute, how can they first say there's a right and then they say there's not a right? Well, judges and lawyers all know that whenever you have a law, there may be different ways to interpret the meaning of that law. It may not be expressly stated, but a reasonable person could say, well, we know what you're talking about. When we say liberty, happiness, uh, privacy, we got to know what you're saying. But this Supreme Court has said, oh, no, unless it's clearly spelled out, unless abortion is stated somewhere in that constitutional Amendment, unless it is a deeply rooted right that's implicit in the reading of that constitutional amendment, we will say that it's a regulatory thing, and the states, the people, get to decide what is right in their state and what they will allow in their state. So regulations vary from state to state. Some states have marijuana as legal. Some states do not. Some states you can drive at 70 miles an hour. Some states you cannot. And those are regulatory things that are used in each state, and the legislatures and the local law um, legislatures decide what those citizens um, want and what they don't want. And so what the Supreme Court has said is we don't see abortion 
anywhere stated in the Constitution. We don't see that word. We don't think that it is deeply rooted in any right. It's not part of our history or tradition, because after all, they don't consider 50 years of law, history, or tradition. And I'm old enough to remember, um, I'm in, in, in my 60s, that at, at one point, and I'm sure, Lindy, you may remember, and many of your listeners may remember, when abortion was actually a crime. You yeah, know, before Roe v. Wade, it was a crime. So the yeah. Supreme Court pulls that out and says, hey, wait just a minute. It's not deeply rooted in our nation's history. It's not deeply rooted in tradition. And we don't find that it is implicitly a part of the word liberty. We don't find that it's part of privacy. And if it is, then it's up to the community to decide. States are given back the right to make that decision. And that's what Dobbs is saying. We are not going to make it a constitutional right. It was wrong. 50 years ago when the Supreme Court found it to be a constitutional right. That was a mistake and we're overturning it. Okay, I see because uh, that reminds me and I know I don't need to go off the subject because we only have a few more minutes. There was another um, I think it was um, about blacks and slaves, the 14th Amendment or something. It was something not written in the Constitution. I, I don't want to go into it, but it helps to understand what you're saying. If it's not exactly. written explicitly, yes, I understand. That, and, 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 you know, what it was also saying is, hey, Congress, if you want it to be a constitutional right, then you pass a constitutional amendment. If you want it to be a uh, right that all states must recognize, then make it a constitutional amendment. But unless you spell out those words, A-B-O-R-T-I-O-N, we don't see it, and therefore it's not going to be a constitutional amendment, and it's not going to be a constitutional right that we are finding. Um, The scary thing about it is by sending it back to the state, each state gets to do what they want. And they can decide that, uh, you know, they can say conception is when life begins and we will prohibit any abortion with no exceptions. You know, in the Dobbs case, Mississippi's law restricted uh, abortions and that was the problem in it. It said medical emergency, a fetal abnormality, and uh, if it was more than 15 weeks, you know, there were very deep uh, uh, constrictions. But basically, it was a no abortions law. And the health clinic challenged it and said, no, no, no. You know, um, we have a constitutional right. It is a multimedia message. And so that that's basically what's happened, and it's it's very sad for a lot of people. And then uh, maybe in about a minute, does does that going to be something that affects? Because uh, we have six twenty four. Uh, I heard something about um, gay rights, gay men. Is yes. that something that's in this too? Yes, absolutely. If you think about it, um, the same interpretation that found that you could read into the Constitution liberty and right to privacy as extending to abortion, think about it. What you do in the privacy of your home could be referred to be the right to privacy. Well, that would be uh, gay marriage, um, what you would do in public. Um, You could be married, and that's not something that goes back in our traditions too far. We haven't had gay marriage very long. Um, what about um, the, the right to the, the type of sexual partner in Lawrence, the Lawrence case? Um, no one uh, would have thought, you know, maybe 100 years ago that our laws would be open in the way they are. 
um, and Griswold, the right to, to conception, uh, contra- contraception. Um, you, you know, not only do married women um, control when they get pregnant, but unmarried women may decide to control whether they get pregnant or not. And what the Supreme Court has said it saying is those rights are not written in the Constitution. So if they're not okay. written, we're going to say We're not going to honor it. Okay, I got it now. All right, well, Judge, um, um, retired Judge, I don't want to put you on the spot and make somebody think you, but you know you've been out there for 21 years doing this. That's why I asked you, because I knew you would know how to look into that bill and interpret it for us. And I thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you for having me, Lindia. All right. I'm going to go to my close now. Like us on Facebook and click sub- subscribe when you listen to this show or you share it with someone else and follow us on Twitter. Read my column in the Washington Informer newspaper. I even have a special front page story this week about the new Lamont Riggs Lillian J. Huff Library. Plus, my column is there in the religion corner. Uh, The title of that column is The Principle of Specialized Knowledge. I am so excited about that. Thank you for tuning in. Next week, we're going to have a type 2 diabetes prevention show with Dr. Gail Nunley Bland from Howard University Hospital. Worship with my church family at the All Nations Baptist Church, where our pastor is the Reverend Dr. James Coleman. He's beginning a new series. Uh, this week, is, he's going to be talking about freedom because something to do with freedom in Christ uh, relating to the 4th of July and freedom. But he's going to talk about freedom in Christ. Words, thoughts, and deeds have a boomerang effect. So be careful what you send out. Scripture says, my people perish for the lack of knowledge. So think on these things from the Lindy Grant Show. I'm your host, Lindy Grant. Until next week, good day. Thank you for listening to the Lindia Grant Show. Think on these things with your host, Lindia Grant.